All right, we're going to start part two of this video on the scrub plane. Everything is looking real good. I was able to get the bed of the plane very flat. I transferred some graphite from the pencil to the back of the iron and I rub it along the bed and transfer the graphite to the bed of the plane and then that shows me where the high spots are and I shave those with the the floats and the chisel and I took the twist out of it so this is very flat this is going to hold the, the iron very well you want that so that there's no chatter and you're able to set the uh, the wedge and release it reliably and the same thing with the um, the pencil and the abutments you want to make sure that there's no rocking where the where the uh, the wedge would hit both abutments and that there's no high spots because that's going to hold the pressure of the wedge and uh, create the holding force for the blade you don't want the blade to slip and you want to keep the mouth the throat the abutments and everything centered on the plane you don't want to work to one side and have one side too thin back here or over here and you don't want any twists or anything same thing with the back here you want to keep this square and keep all this straight keep the corners nice and crisp you should have sharp floats sharp chisels and uh, just rely on your eye and your common sense to do all the work you really can't measure too much in here your tape measure and your and your other measuring devices are really not much of a use for you in my opinion the way things fit are gonna depend are gonna be more important than how large or small things are so what I will do next is square the entire plane up and I'll use calipers to make sure that the, the sides are parallel to each other and the top and bottom are parallel to each other. I'm going to square up all the corners, flatten everything, and then I will round the corners. I've already rounded these front corners because you can't get in down at the bottom here to do all this work. So this has already been done. I will do the top corners and then I'll be able to set the wedge and uh, then I'll start working on the uh, not the wedge uh, I'll be able to set the horn in place and then I'll be able to do the wedge and basically at that point the only thing left to do is cut the excess off the front cut the excess off the back and this plane will, this plane will be done so in the meantime um, that's really all there is to it. I'm going to keep going. Moving right along. I have the horns fabricated. They're all sanded. I did some trimming on them so that they fit tightly along the bottom and also this joint up here is tightened up. They fit snugly along the top. Right in here. All the curves are nice. So the only thing left that the major work that I have left is the wedge, which I'm going to do tomorrow. So in the meantime, I'm going to glue up the horns and let them sit for a while. So uh, the other thing I wanted to add is that you have to you have to shape this corner and this top edge and also square up the plane completely before you install the horn because once the horn is in place you can't do any of the tooling that's around it there's not enough room there's not enough room in here to round this over so you want to do that and up in here in this corner you want to do all this tooling and rounding and sanding and shaping and also uh, square up the plane before you install the horn the reason the plane needs to be square is so that when you reshape the bottom after it wears out you'll be able to throw your combination square on here and your straight edge and square off of any of the sides and the top and everything and you'll be able to recondition the bottom and you'll be back in shape again 
So that's the whole idea behind that. So let me go ahead and glue up this horn. Okay, I'm still working on the scrub planes. I got one more wedge to do. Let's see if I could film everything from start to finish and get this wedge completed. Pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah, that's good. 
Okay. Got it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out for the buttresses. So what I did on the last one was I take a piece of scrap steel and I put it up against the side of the wedge and then I stack two one-eighth pieces next to that. That's how I get my quarter-inch buttress. And that goes all the way up. I do the same thing on the other side. Okay. So now let me just square up a line across here. Okay. So then what I do is I come down 60 degrees. from that very corner okay then I'll make another square line across those two points. Then from there, let's see, from there I'll go half inch and then another three quarters of an inch. So, what you want is zero space right in here. Same thing on the other side. 
you got no seam right in here. That means there's even friction all the way down. This blade is going to be set and it's not going to move. So there's no twists in it, there's no lumps. The top of the wedge is flat. The abutments are parallel to each other. So it's real easy to strike off the line for the abutments the way I did it with the two pieces of metal. Because everything is perpendicular, flat, square. It, it actually it makes it a lot easier. And then the other thing is, of course, when you set the blade, it sets real good, and then it releases real good. So let's zoom out a little bit and see what we got. That's the whole procedure for the wedge. Soup to nuts. And there's your throat. Right there. So there's going to be plenty of space in there for the for the chip to come out, come up over the blade, over the little ramp in the wedge, and out through the throat. And I'll do a little sanding in there, but that's all the shaping. And this is like ready to use right now. I'm at the end of the scrub plane project. So if you look at the original, this is the one where I've been making all the copies from this piece. This is something that I've avoided using since I bought it about eight years ago. This is my first copy. I made this shortly after. This is one of the first copies of any plane that I ever made. I believe I made this in 2014 and I've been using it ever since. Since it's a scrub plane, I need this to start every project because I'm taking all my lumber since 2014, taking it from the curbside and flattening and milling lumber from logs. This is the first plane that I use for every project. So that's the first copy. Uh, then this is one of the copies from this video. It's going to have a homemade blade. I haven't shaped it or done any hardening, heat treating with it. I will do that at a later time when I have multiple blades that I can do all at once because that's a big setup with the oven and the torches and everything. But this one came out very nice. This one is the other plane that I made in this video. Also very, very nice. This one has the aftermarket, the high-end aftermarket blade. I'm very happy with the way these came out. All, all, all the tooling, the wedging, the wedges, the shaping, everything is looking real good on these. Uh, I tried to get all the segments to line up at the back end of it. I did a pretty good job of that. This has all been rounded over with the 3 8 router and then I, up, up near the front and I did all that by hand. Again, all the work for the throats, the wedges, everything is looking real good. They're almost clones of each other. If you look at what I tried to do and discipline myself to create the same sizes for everything. So, overall, I'm very happy with the way these came out. And these are going to be working planes. So, I have a piece of timber here. This blade has been set. Uh, this is going to be a joiner plane someday, so I need to flatten the bottom so that I can start squaring it up and reducing it in size and trying to get a, I'll try and get a, a nice blank for a joiner plane out of it. And as you can see, it operates real smoothly. You get all the chips come right out. Uh, I did sand and file the throat. There's no paste wax in there or anything. This is pretty much. This is this is a really good working plane. Now they don't stay in this condition forever. The bottom will wear out once that happens, and I think twice or three times when it when. 
what happens is that you will sh uh, sharpen the dull blade and then get very little improvement in the performance with the sharp blade. That's when you'll know that you have a problem with the bottom of the plane. So occasionally when you're working with something like this, it could be any plane that has a wooden body, check it with a straight edge, put your combination square on it, and as soon as it starts to get out of flat, and you'll be able to tell. So if it's out a little, it'll still work because it's a scrub plane. But once it gets too far out, out of uh, straightness and squareness, and you cannot improve the performance by sharpening the blade, then that's when you're going to want to remachine or reflatten the sole of the plane. And it's not really a big, a big deal, <clears throat> but that's how you tell. Anyway, someday this will be a joiner plane. I want to thank everybody for liking, subscribing, for watching the videos, and uh, everybody. Stay strong. We got a lot more work to do.